Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and our next guest is Katie Milioni of My Habits. Welcome to Radio Entrepreneurs. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much for inviting me. This is a great opportunity to talk to American people and uh, uh, discussing my journey from clinical research to uh, entrepreneurship, My Habits. So, so that's fascinating, and I, I'm not going to. I'm going to put that on pause for a second. We'll get back to your background because really fascinating, going from a, a clinical research uh, career to uh, becoming an entrepreneur. But why don't you tell people first off what My Habits is? Uh, you've developed an app and and a very specific app. So tell our listeners yes. what it's all about. Uh, My Habit is the first behavioral vaccine application for people who undergo bariatric surgery, in order to help them adopt the new eating habits and lifestyle changes that last forever for a healthier, happier life. And actually it's the first time uh, to our knowledge at least that an application has been specifically designed for those people. But I can tell you how this idea came up. Yes, I'd love to hear about it. As, uh, as you said, you were a clinical researcher, had a long yes. career in clinical research and uh, you know, uh, very often uh, innovation uh, is the mother of invention, right? You come up with an idea and a concept. So tell us how it happened in your case. Exactly. Um, I have, uh, my background is, uh, clean, is, is chemistry, my first degree. Then I did my PhD in France. In, uh, f- first of all, it didn't say that I come from Athens. I am a Greek uh, person uh, based in Athens actually. And um, I have done so my PhD in the University of Strasbourg in pharmaceutical chemistry. I have developed a a drug for uh, anti-inflammatory diseases. And then I went uh, and spent three years, three to four years actually it was in San Francisco at the university, uh, at the medical school of UCSF. And um, when I came back in in Athens, I worked uh, for almost uh, 20 years on drug research and development. I found out early on <laughs> that um, clinical research is, uh, is, is actually innovation. And I was amazed uh, by all these people who participated in our clinical trials, how difficult uh, it was for them um, to really um, adhere to physicians' recommendations. So this was the trigger uh, for me to participate at the European Patient Forum. And there I had the opportunity to listen to patients' problems. Second thing is that um, uh, one patient, Barbara, who was participating in our anti-diabetic study, and she was the most disciplined. I mean, she didn't miss any any meeting, any any appointment uh, for our clinical research. Uh, One day she called me and she told me, you know, Katie, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do bariatric surgery, but please, Katie, help. How am I going to adopt to this uh, new habit? So this was my inspiration and uh, uh, I immediately f- 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 try to find how can I become an entrepreneur? How I can I can so how I can bring a solution for the for Barbara? So I was um, quite lucky because at that time it was six years ago. Uh, Founder Institute, you know, this uh, entrepreneurship program from Silicon Valley took place here in Athens. So uh, my journey, my exciting journey with my habits, really started, and. Um, I started digging deeply into behavior change, into obesity, and together with my team, I found uh, other people who joined uh, our team from Belfast, from Belgium, from Poland, uh, and we established my habits. uh, As I said, it's an app specifically designed for post-obesity bariatric patients uh, in 2019. And, this, and by, uh, by definition, right out of the gate, you have an international uh, company uh, just based on your team. Uh, really fascinating. Uh, so, yes, uh, we, we work remotely. And actually, my next step, our next step is to soft land in the United States. So uh, I want to come back from where I did my PhD. I want to, I want to start having um, you know, discussions and partnerships maybe uh, with the United States because USA is our biggest market uh, for my habits, of course. And uh, so, so it's very, very fascinating. One of the revelations that you had when you're doing your clinical research, and I, I wonder how much this is true, is, is you know, in, in a case of bariatric surgery, the surgeon can only do so much, right? They do their technical job of making the surgery work, but then mm-hmm. so much of the outcome or the long-term uh, success is really based on the patient's compliance um, exactly. and, and habit changing, et cetera. And I, I would imagine whether it's in this particular uh, instance or, or any type of 
um, surgical intervention or medical intervention, a lot of the long-term success is dependent upon the patient. Are there, are, are there studies or facts that, that brought you to this conclusion with regards to barrier surgery that said, you know, 80% of patients don't comply with what their doctors tell or the compliance of patients in general is really not very good post uh, surgical intervention, et cetera. I, I would imagine human nature takes you back to whatever your bad habits yes. were before, they probably are afterwards. <laughs> yes, you're, you're right, Jonathan. You know, um, one of our uh, medical advisors who is uh, based in Czech Republic in Prague and who is executive director for Europe at uh, IFSO, IFSO stands for the International Federation for the Surgery of Obesity, um, told us in a Congress and he inspired me as well that um, you know 30% success of the surgery depends on the surgery itself and 70% is behavior change. So um, mm. it's an opportunity for us to start with post bariatric patients actually because uh, these people, you know, the, the, the people who undergo bariatric surgery after the surgery are like the newborns. They started with you know with liquid food and then after one month they start with um, with solid food. So we have a unique opportunity to educate them. I mean, to become the new selves and of course to be autonomous. And we use the term a behavioral vaccine. And sometimes I have heard a lot of, you know, of contradictory discussions about, oh, vaccine and related to our pandemic and to the difficult times that are, uh, we are living, uh, I mean, every, every one of us, uh, we say that, you know, you have, you have done your surgery and now you have the unique opportunity to become autonomous. And we use the terminology behavioral vaccine because after using my habits, you have, you, we want you to become self-autonomous. You don't, you don't need to go again to visit uh, dietitians, to visit the psychologists. You, you, you have the control of yourself. This is why also we use the terminology behavioral vaccine. We immunize you against the old, um, uh, already coming uh, bad habits. So tell us about the pre no, no, we understand. So tell us about the premise behind the um, the app itself. Um, is it is it a tool that, uh, as a, a post surgical uh, candidate, I would utilize daily, hourly, uh, weekly? Is it setting up schedules? I mean, it's it's really about behavioral change. So I'd imagine repetition is key early on. Yes. Uh, as, as with any habits, but what is the vision for how somebody interacts um, with, with the app? And, and tell us a little bit about that life cycle, what it might look like for a patient. Um, we, we, you know, we have just started using uh, and uh, our surgeons, the surgeons, the surgical centers in, within Europe that uh, recommend my habits because our business model is that um, the, the healthcare practitioners who do the follow-up of uh, the newly uh, operated bariatric patients uh, recommend my habits use uh, for their patients. Um, the minimum, um, the minimum uh, time uh, for use for my habits is four months, four months, four to five months. However, uh, for the first, uh, we recommend to use it at least 15 months uh, in order, you know, to have the time uh, to, uh, to adopt these new habits. Of course, um, we are currently conducting a study at NHS at Imperial College, uh, which will give us also more evidence of how long um, my habits use has to be um, uh, better for, for this target audience. So, you are going so to imagine over that period, so, so that period of time, you're saying uh, after 15 months, they should be ingrained habits that should stick with somebody, uh, presumably through their life or hopefully through their life, um, to be able to ad adopt that uh, behavioral change and become uh, lifelong habits. Essentially, I, yes. I guess I guess I, I guess uh, you know maybe not a parallel, but I guess if if people are um, you know maybe a bad example, but uh, 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 we're alcoholics and 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 it didn't become you know what's that period of time? Are they always tempted for life, or is somebody tempted to slide back into into poor eating habits? Or over a period of time, do people really adopt those behavioral changes and and lead the lifestyle that you're looking to have them? What 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 brought them to, to bariatric surgery in the first place? So so hopefully people have adopted those habits over that period of utilizing my habits and developing new uh, ways of, of living, correct? That's yes. what you're looking for? You know, 
this uh, this target audience that we chose to uh, work uh, at least as a first step uh, they have to be um, followed up for the rest of their life. Actually, the recommendations of, of guidelines, international guidelines, are to be followed for their lifetime. So um, my habit, I believe, we don't have data. So I'm, we, are, we are scientists. So we don't want to say things that have not been proved yet. So uh, we don't have this data. Uh, but uh, considering that these patients have to be followed for, for many, many years, because you know, weight to regain happens after three to four years. Oh, wow. We believe, we believe, uh, we believe, but still is, we want, we have to test it to, in order to have this evidence-based data. We believe that this um, will really help these people not to regain their weight after three to four years. This is the problem we solve. Hmm. Well, it's, it, it's a fascinating premise because most people I think are under the perhaps mistaken illusion and again, not having gone through the process, but my understanding is that people think it's a mechanical solution. Um, the surgery is a mechanical solution in a sense, ah, but, yes. but, but, but the behavioral change is the difficult part yeah. <laughs> for the patient. That's true, that's true. That's why, that's why the surgeons say um, the outcome, the successful outcome depends 30% of the surgery itself and 70% on behavior change. And you know, this is, this is true in, in many matters. And you are also true that behavior change is not an easy thing, it's not an easy task. But you know, um, digital therapeutics and behavioral change modifications are going to be the 21st century uh, drugs. Excellent. So Katie, given that uh, you, you had that uh, long career in, in research and, and, and as um, you know, have, have uh, you know, deep academic uh, knowledge, uh, you know, gained through your PhD, et cetera, what is the transition like uh, to help our listeners understand as, a, as an entrepreneur um, uh, developing an app? You know, everybody has ideas about apps, but very few people actually execute on them. You're somebody who took, mm -hmm. took an idea and, and have now developed it into a, a real product that uh, is going to market. What are some of the lessons that you'd like to share with other people or some of the things that you learned? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps one, uh, if you identified one thing that was more difficult than you thought it would be, just some lessons learned along the way for us. First of all, I think that um, passion is the first. I mean, okay, everybody talks about this. Yes, you have to, you, ha you, you need to, um, to wake up in the morning and say, okay, today I will resolve this, today I will resolve this. So I think if you are triggered by, by something, you know, uh, by, by an idea, uh, you have to observe first, and then you need passion uh, to execute it. Uh, and perseverance, otherwise you cannot succeed. Um, many times, uh, many evenings, I said, okay, that's it. I will go back to my previous job. I am experienced, I will. And then in the morning I said, no, 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 this has to be finalized. And you know, Jonathan, the, the most difficult part of it was that all the team, all my habits team are scientists. We don't have um, developers in our team and, this was my most difficult, um, uh, actually, uh, the obstacle in really uh, making the app available at, on Google Play and App Store. I mean, to have, the, to, have um, um, uh, to discuss with developers, to discuss with software engineers. And, and this was my most difficult, um, the most difficult problem in really delivering the app. But it was so, so joyful, uh, the journey with my habits until today. I, uh, we laughed uh, with my team. When we were designing the app, uh, I was here, Olga was in Brussels, uh, Anestis was in Warsaw, Katarina was in Belfast, and we had some amazing time together, all together designing the app. So I, I, I never regret that I left a little bit clinical research because we, we still do clinical trials, but of course with my habits. But um, if, you, if you have a good time, if you enjoy what you do, uh, this is the recipe, I think. Excellent sound advice. We're going to have to uh, bring you back again and, and learn more about the, the, the launch and the, and the adoption in the marketplace and, and how people are uh, not only changing their habits, but changing their lives. Um, yes. Our guest on Radio Entrepreneurs has been Katie Milioni, founder of My Habits. 
Katie, if people want to get in touch with you, learn more about uh, your app, learn about the company, learn about how you can help them, yes. what's the best way for they them have, to reach out to you? We have, uh, we have uh, the digital friend, Lino and Lina, who are uh, your friends. I mean, the friends of all these people who want to really adopt new healthy uh, eating habits and lifestyle changes. And we welcome all of those interested to know more about My Habits. So they have to visit our website, myhabits.co, or send me an email at katie at myhabits.co. And I just want to make sure that people know it's habits, H-A-B-E-A-T-S. Yes. Correct? Yes. Excellent. Our guest has been Katie Milioni, founder of My Habits, and we wish you continued success as you, you. Uh, get into Thank the marketplace. You. Uh, and, and we need it. We need it. Thank you very much, Jonathan. It was a pleasure talking with you today. Excellent. And we'll be right back with another guest on Radio Entrepreneurs.